hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is olushola also known as mommy mo and i'm the founder of mommy mo hair care here on youtube and instagram so basically i provide content which teaches you how to manage afro textured hair the things you need to know about managing afro textured hair the things you shouldn't be doing the things you should be doing and all whatnot all right so in this video i'm going to be talking and discussing about head lice so i know for some of us it's like <laughs> in fact when i was preparing my slides for this video and i felt creeped out <laughs> just by looking at the images you know doing my research and all of that okay but um it's not something that you should be too wary of because it's something that can be easily controlled if you know what to do and please 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 lice is not a problem with personal hygiene i think a lot of people have that misconception it is really really not okay it's just basically an insect infestation that you need to get the hang of that you need to deal with and once you've dealt with it the right way usually it doesn't reoccur and if you put preventative measures in place it usually does not reoccur all right so in this teaching i'm going to be using like a slideshow format because i have slides that i prepared and i felt that that would help me deliver this topic much better than just talking about it to you at least with some visual aids um, I guess the, the teaching will stick uh, a bit better and you'll understand better. And you can always keep coming back to the video to find out more um, about this thing. So I'm going to be talking about lice, what is it, who is at risk, what are the symptoms, what are the signs, what are the treatments and how can you prevent it. All right. So now let's get right into the teaching. Okay, let's get right into this teaching. So basically, what is head lice? And as you can see from the image, it's a little tiny insect. It's really, really tiny, very, very tiny. I think it's uh, smaller than the head of a matchstick, if I'm correct. So it's usually a wingless parasitic insect, which feeds on human blood from the scalp. Now, it's important to know that there are different types of lice. You have head lice, you have body lice, and then you have pubic lice. So lice that is found in the pubic area. But um, more commonly, we hear about head lice because children are always getting it from school or from maybe they've gone somewhere. But basically, this is what it is. Um, the, scientific, the scientific name is Pediculus humanus capitis. So the humanus is because it feeds on human blood. It actually cannot survive without human blood, okay? A single one is called a louse and many collectively are called lice. They are found mostly on the scalp. So when this infestation occurs, these insects can mostly be found on the scalp, near the ears, and then the back of the neck, like the nape area, all right? Now, the female lice lays eggs, which are called nits, which stick to the hair strands, which is why um, the infestation is so difficult to get rid of if you don't know what to do, all right? Um, even when they are active, even before they've laid their eggs, the lice grip the hair strands. So they're very, <laughs> they have a bit of strength, okay? So they grip the hair strands. And then when they lay their eggs, um, they have like this adhesive thing, which helps the nits, which are called the eggs, to stick to the hair strands, all right? Like I said earlier, they cannot survive without human blood, which means that they die. Uh, really quickly within about 24 hours or so if they're separated from human from the human host they tend to die off and the eggs hatch within six to nine days some some information will say um seven to ten days you know it varies but about six to nine days on average is when the eggs hatch so when you're actually treating a lice infestation which is what it is when you're doing treatments some of them need to be repeated according to the life cycle of the lice. So that as the eggs has, so for example, if you treated the hair or, or you, you treated the infection and you know you got some out, but the female lice had already laid eggs, all right, and maybe the treatment you're using doesn't kill eggs, but it kills active lice, then it means that the eggs had the opportunity to, to hatch. So you need to try to treat according to the life cycle. Maybe every three to four days, you go out and treat again, depending on whatever treatment it is you are using. Now we move on to who exactly is at risk of contacting or getting a lice infestation. Usually they're kids of preschool age, which is what is usually very common uh, through, through through to elementary school and they're usually within the ages of three to 11 years old so these are the ages where children are still really innocent playing together they don't have any misconceptions about their friends or anything so they tend to play closely together and because lice um is something that um is contacted 
or is transmitted by close contact, children of these ages tend to catch um, the infestation all right, more commonly. Then uh, other people at risk are members, family members of the children described in the above category because if the children contact it from outside and they bring it home, because at home we're close, we share stuff, you know, we hug each other, head to head contact is very common. Um, it's possible for family members to also catch lice infestation. And like I said earlier in my introduction, getting lice is not a sign of poor personal hygiene or unclean living conditions. It is not. People always say this, but it is not. So it's good to put the education out there. All right. You don't have lice because you're dirty. You don't have lice because you're not clean. You don't have lice because you don't brush your teeth often. You don't have lice because you don't wash your hair often. No, that has nothing to do with lice. It's just, you know, the movement of this insect from one person to the other and it doesn't discriminate it doesn't say oh this person's hair is dirty so i'm going to feed in here no it doesn't it doesn't do that whether your hair is clean whether your hair is dirty if it comes in contact with your hair it will get in now I'll quickly move on to how lice can be transmitted or what causes the infestation so like i said earlier when i was talking about the the uh, people at risk of contacting these young children and, and like you can see in the picture here um you can see when kids are playing or maybe they're just watching an ipad together or watching something together or playing a game together usually you know they're really really close together and then like you can see in the in, in the photo their heads are together so imagine the boy on the extreme left if he had a lice infestation the boy beside him <laughs> all right with the uh with brown hair would already catch the lice because they would move from his hair to the to, to the next boy's hair and as you can see the boy on the extreme right is also leaning in really closely to the boy in the middle meaning that he can also catch lice if that boy has lice and the one behind as well as he moves closer and closer and his head touches their own head he can also catch the lice all right so close person to person contact um, is how lice is transmitted it can also be transmitted by sharing infested belongings so assuming um your child is a, you have a son who likes to play football and then there's this football club that they all go for maybe on the weekends and then someone in the football club has come in contact with another person who has lice and is carrying the lice in his hair all right so um he brings his belongings so he would have his 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 clothes he'll have maybe some earphones maybe he'll have a hat or something everything that he's actively using and when he goes to the football club he'll put everything in the locker where they tell everybody to drop their stuff when it's time to play football and then your own child well god forbid <laughs> but just in case your own child um stores his or her own clothes or items like you know headphones your towels the combs brushes you know all the stuff that he brought for football practice and he stores it in the same locker where the boy with the lice infestation stored his own belongings it's possible for the lice to transfer so sharing infested belongings or oh, sorry storing infested belongings uh storing your own belongings with um belongings that other people uh, oh, sorry, yeah, belongings that have already infested with lice because the people who are using them have lice can also transmit it. And then sharing, sharing, I think I, I, made, I had a mix up when I was discussing, sharing the infested belongings. So assuming um, a child comes home from school, gets uh, has contacted lice from someone in their class where they were playing together, comes home and then of course uses the blanket at home, uses the shirt, the um the shower cap yeah it's possible for girls uses the shower cap at home uh combs brushes with her brother with her sister or with someone who is living in the house and then that transfers the lice from that child to the other child or the family member who is sharing the item so lice can be um, primarily transmitted in three ways close to close person to person contact sharing infested belongings like i said clothing towels headphones combs brushes hair accessories hats scarves blankets pillows stuffed toys you know things that come in close contact with this area and then of course storing belongings with infested items can transmit the lice infestation 
Moving on quickly, what are the common signs and symptoms of a lice infestation? I'm sure this is a no-brainer. Most children or most persons who have a lice infestation usually experience um, a lot of itching, a lot of itching on their scalp, their neck, their ear area. And this itching is an allergic response to the bites from the lice, okay? So when the lice feed, when the lice uh, feed, they feed right from the scalp because your hair strands don't have a blood supply. They don't have blood supply. Hair strands are dead. They are dead fibers, all right? There's blood supply to our scalps. So it is the scalp they feed on. Even though they, they hook onto hair a few centimeters from the scalp or very few centimeters from the scalp, but when they are feeding, they are feeding on the scalp because that is where they can get the blood that they are feeding on. There's blood supply to the scalp. And those bites, those bites, our skin, our scalp usually reacts to it and then it causes that itching sensation. There's also a tickling feeling of something moving around in the head because when they're crawling around and moving around. And um, apparently when I was doing my research, they don't like light. So if you're in a light area, they try to move around and go to a darker spot on the scalp. <laughs> All right. Um, another common sign is that there's presence of the lice and nits in the hair. And one of the ways of actually diagnosing a lice infestation is that you need to actually see the lice and the nits. A lot of people confuse lice with things like dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis or scalp conditions that have like really white flakes, lots of flakes. But you have to inspect really, really properly and notice that there's active lice in the hair. Another common sign and symptom of a lice infestation is that there's irritability and difficulty sleeping because, you know what I just said now, they don't like light, they like dark, dark areas. And then, of course, at night, when we go to bed, we turn off the, we, 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 we turn off the lights and all of that. The whole room is dark. They are most active at that time. So there's irritability and there's difficulty sleeping because of how active they are at night time or in the dark. Then um, another sign is that there are sores. And these sores are caused by when the individual who has infestation is scratching the scalp or scratching the side of the ear or scratching the back of the neck. Okay. And most times when we're scratching, of course, we're using our nails. And this can lead to infections because. Um, Sores means that you've probably broken the skin of the scalp or the skin, whatever area it is you're scratching. And when you break skin, you provide an entry point for bacteria to enter if they're present. And of course, there's bacteria everywhere. Bacteria is ubiquitous. It's all over the place. It's in the air. It's in our nostrils. It's in our ears. It's on our skin. Okay, so if the sores, which is broken skin, now get infected with bacteria on the person's skin, it can lead to infections, which you now have to manage in addition to try to um, handle the lice infestation. Now, having said all that, you now understand what lice are, who is at risk, how it can be transmitted, what are the common signs for, of a lice infestation. Now, let's talk about the treatment, which is, I'm sure, where everybody has been waiting for. How do we get rid of these pesky buggers <laughs> in the hair, okay? And this information is good. You may not have um, an incident of lice in your family. Um, Thankfully, we've never had one, okay? But the information is good to know. So if you know someone whose child has lice, you can tell them, okay, this is what you need to do. You don't need to resort to damaging hair practices or damaging treatments. People tend to use things that have like some pesticide action and put it in hair, which is wrong because our scalp is absorbent. Our scalp is porous. And when you put things that are not safe for our scalp, you now end up causing a secondary problem to the lice infestation. All right. You also don't need to cut the hair. It's not necessary. You don't need to put things like kerosene for people in Africa or West Africa, where I'm from. Um, you know, you don't need to use, and there are a lot of DIY stuff, but having the right information helps you to know better and helps you to do better. Okay. So there are treatments for lice. You don't have to destroy your child's hair or destroy your child's confidence because of the lice infestation. There are treatments that are available. There are prescription treatments and there are non-prescription treatments. And I'll start with the non-prescription treatments. So these are things that you can buy over the counter. You can just go to the chemist, like we say, where I'm from Nigeria, or you can go to the pharmacist and just tell them that, okay, um, my daughter has lice or my son has lice and I'm looking for either a shampoo or a lotion or or something that can help to kill the lice, something that is toxic to lice, but is safe for 
skin according to their age, okay, the age of the child, because these different um, medications, whether prescription or non-prescription, most of them have an age threshold. Some you cannot use on children um, under maybe two years old, um, you know, things like that. Some are safe for kids above the age of two months old. So you need to bear all these things in mind. Now, uh, for non-prescription treatments, you can get over-the-counter medicated or prescription shampoos containing pyrethrin or permethrin. Now, uh, pyrethrin, I think, is, is the synthetic form of permethrin, and this is toxic to light. So when you buy a shampoo containing these ingredients, either one or the other, you need to follow the instructions. And when you are treating lice, it is very, very important that you stay consistent with the treatment according to whatever it is you have decided to use. Follow the instructions on the product to the letter. Follow the instructions, please, right to the letter, okay? Don't don't slip up on it don't forget about it and some of because some of them even need retreatment some of them you need to um apply the treatment after maybe a couple of days or something so you need to follow the instructions strictly to the letter so that you can get rid of the entire infestation now with lice infestations if you do not treat appropriately if you do not treat correctly it can reoccur because remember the the lice are laying eggs and as you can see from this image of the life cycle. They reproduce really, really quickly, really, really quickly. So you need to follow instructions, okay? So you can use um, shampoos containing pyrethrin or permethrin. Um, there's a lotion that you can get also containing ivermectin and you must follow the instructions for use, okay? So follow the instructions for use, okay? Um, that is how these non-prescription treatments will give you the best outcome. And then of course, after applying things like shampoos or lotions, please be sure to go in with a fine tooth comb after rinsing out the treatment or whatever it is the product said you need to do, you know, after applying, because I don't think uh, many of them will, will, will tell you to leave in the product in the hair. They are treatments for a particular period of time, they're either rinsing out or, you know, something like that. So be sure to use a fine tooth comb so that you can comb out the dead lice and, and also possibly comb out the nits from the hair strands as well. All right. And like I've put the note there, some treatments need to be repeated over a period of about three weeks. So if you repeat the treatments over a period of three, three weeks, most of the time you get rid of everything, the active lice, the dead lice, and the nits that were left behind after the treatment. Really, really important, please. Treatment, take it very, very, very seriously. Now, there are also prescription treatments for lice infestations. And prescription treatments means that a doctor, a doctor must give you the prescription to get from the pharmacy. You cannot go to the pharmacy by yourself and ask for these treatments, okay? You cannot. The doctor needs to have prescribed it and the doctor will guide you on how you should be using it. All right. Now, there for, for prescription treatments, you have stuff that you can take orally and there's stuff that you can apply topically. Now, Ivermectin is available by prescription as a tablet taken by mouth. And like I've written there, please talk to your doctor. They know the right dosage according to the age of the child. I keep saying child because it's mostly children who contact lice. Malathion is a prescription drug that you can apply to the hair and then rub into the hair and scalp. Again, when you get the drug, follow the instructions. Spinosad is actually a really new prescription treatment for head lice. And apparently I hear it's super effective, super effective. Like, like it kills active lice, it kills the nits, it does the whole job. So talk to a doctor um, about it. Okay. So treatment, you have non-prescription treatments, which are stuff that you can buy over the counter. You just walk into the pharmacy, you complain, Oh, my child has lice. And then they tell you, okay, you can buy this, you can buy this, you can buy that. And then there are other things that are prescription, which must, which must be prescribed or recommended by a medical doctor. And the doctor will give you the dosage and will give you the instructions on how to use them. And please, 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 when you're treating, treating a lice infestation, please don't combine treatment. So don't go to the pharmacy and get um, a lice treatment or a lice um, or, a, or, or a shampoo or a lotion or something. And then also go to the doctor and get something else as well. And then combine those two treatments because you are so desperate to get the lice out of your child's hair. Please do not do that. That can be quite dangerous and quite harmful. Remember I said 
our scalp is porous. It's like skin. Whatever you apply on it, it will absorb. So you need to ensure that whatever you're applying is not toxic to the body. And some things are not toxic in certain amounts and toxic at greater amounts. Okay, so if you're mixing stuff that maybe if you're using this particular one and maybe um, a pyrethrin shampoo and you find out, okay, it's not really working for you. And then you go to the doctor and you get something that is strong like um, malathion and then you combine the two. The combination of the two could be toxic you know, and could cause problems, could cause allergic reactions, you know, could cause all sorts of things. So you want to be very careful. Stick to only one life treatment at a time. If you're using one and you find that it's not working for you, please talk to a healthcare provider or a, or a healthcare professional about it and they will guide you accordingly. Okay, so these are the prescription and non-prescription ways of treating head lice. Now you can also skip out on the medications, whether it's topical or whether it's oral, and decide that you want to handle lice by yourself. Maybe because you're worried, maybe your child is young, you don't want to expose her to medicines, or you're a bit drug averse, and you don't always like um, reaching out for medication at the first uh, drop uh, or at the drop of a hat whenever you want to try to deal with something or cure something. There are some home remedies or supplemental care like I have put up on the slide. Now, one home remedy which I find works for some people, I know a customer of mine, a client of mine, um, we've discussed this and she just used this very first bullet point using a fine tooth comb to physically remove the lice from wet hair, fully saturated with conditioner. That was all she did. And she repeated the steps every three to four days, every three to four days, every three to four days, for at least two weeks. Uh, so you can do two weeks, three weeks, and her children ended up being lice-free. So that is an option. So if you're not um, very willing to try the lice kits from the pharmacy, the lice medications, uh, the lice treatments, either prescription or non-prescription, you can actually try this. So it means your child's hair would have to be loose for the duration of time that you are treating the infestation so that you can easily unravel, um, wet the hair, apply conditioner, and then use a fine, a very, as fine as you can get it, all right? And if you're working with Afro-textured hair, you are going to need to work in really small sections of hair because fine tooth combs are not ideally made for our type of hair, but there's a way to use them, okay? There's a way to use them. So if you're, if you're handling lice, um, in afro textured hair you need to work with really small sections saturate the hair completely with water saturate it completely with conditioner like loads of conditioner and then get your fine tooth comb or knit comb if you can pass through and then comb out the lice physically so this is the physical removal method all right so you would comb out the lice you comb and then you comb out the knits and then when you're finished with one section you move to the next section the next the next section <laughs> until you have gone round the entire head of hair and when you have done when you are done with that then you can shampoo and then condition as normal because you need to maintain good hair care even though you're treating a lice infestation and then you repeat this every three to four days after every three to four days because the needs will keep hatching and if there's still active lice remaining there's the there's the um, opportunity for the female um lice to lay more eggs so you need to just keep removing lice and knits, lice and knits, lice and knits until the hair is completely clear. So that's a really, really good um, non-medicated way of handling a lice infestation. Now, um, other things that you can do at home to like bring this thing down or to take care of it is also treat everyone in the house who shows signs of an infestation. If anybody else in the house is or in the family is itching, they're scratching, you need to treat them to remove the lice from their hair. All the, all the close contact items like beddings, hats, whatever, you need to wash with really hot soapy water, a minimum of 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 degrees centigrade. Now, and I know a lot of washing machines can go much higher than this, so that makes it even great. If you can wash at 60 degrees centigrade, if you can wash at 90 degrees centigrade, you know, depending on the ability of your washing machine or your washer, please do that. And then if your washer has a dryer function, please dry them on high heat according to the setting, whether it's cotton, it's a cotton fabric or it's a synthetic fabric, dry on high heat for at least 20 minutes. This helps to kill, kill the lice and also tries, it also kills the nits, okay? Um, so you can also, if there are items, if they're clothing items, close contact items, which cannot be washed in your machine, you can dry clean. You can you can take them to the dry cleaner. Tell them, <laughs> tell them that there's a lice infestation because the chemicals used in cleaning the clothes will also get rid of the lice. If you don't want to do that, you can store the items in an airtight bag for two weeks. That is, you completely suffocate the lice 
completely suffocate and then they will die off because they're alive they're animals they need oxygen <laughs> okay so you completely suffocate and kill them also vacuum floors and furniture then wash hair care items which can be washed combs brushes accessories using very hot soapy water like i said at least 130 degrees fahrenheit or 54 degrees centigrade if you don't want to do that, you can also soak combs and brushes in rubbing alcohol for an hour to kill off the lice. So these are things that you can easily do by yourself at home, all right, to take care of a lice infestation. Now, after you have gone through everything, you've done all the treatments, you've done all the clothes washing, you've, you know, you've done everything to get rid of these pesky buggers. How can you now prevent reinfestation from occurring or if you've never had a lice problem how can you actively prevent it you know if this is something maybe um once in a while your child's school sends a message you know that someone has lice blah 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 you know how can you prevent how can you um safeguard your home or your children or yourself from contacting lice number one you need to educate your kids Remember, when they're really young, they love to play in really close contact with, with one another. I think as adults, we tend to say, like, oh, you're in my space, you're in my space. <laughs> you know, things like that. But educate your children. Educate, educate, educate them. Tell them to avoid head-to-head -head contact, head-to-head -head contact when they're playing. So you can play with Tommy, you can play with Ibukun, you can play with Rose, but you don't need to let your head touch her own head. Okay, I know you guys all want to look at the same thing together, but try to keep some distance. Okay, so during play, other activities at home, school, clubs, or elsewhere, tell them to try to avoid head-to-head -head contact because the lights crawl from head-to-head. -head. All right, teach kids not to share, teach kids not to share clothing, things like hearts, um, hats, scarves, coats, sports uniforms, hair accessories, headphones, tell them not to share these things because the lights can crawl from these things onto a fresh scalp. So tell them not to share. Also tell them not to share combs, brushes, towels as much as possible. Um, I know even, even within families, uh, we, we tend to do a lot of sharing with uh, personal items, but it's okay. It's okay to actually, um, get everybody their own comb or their own brush okay or their own towel why because even apart from you know trying to safeguard against some, some, something like a lice uh, infestation um you can also transmit some infections which are probably not even scalp based by sharing things like combs brushes towels all right so it's a really good idea to get children their own separate personal items even if you have three children it's okay to get three combs combs are not very expensive three brushes separate towels and always you know clean these things from time to time in really hot water so please try not to share combs brushes towels within the home and even outside the home tell them okay when you have gone for your swim practice please don't use your friend's towel to dry off make sure you use your own or you're getting ready in the changing room please don't share your friend's hairbrush or your friend's hair comb try to use your own okay um if you find out so try not to use furniture pillows carpets or stuffed animals that have recent recently been in contact with an infested person okay if you know if you know, um, try not to use those things because it's possible that there's some lice crawling around on those things, okay? So that's a really, really good way to prevent uh, lice infestations. Apart from those ways, you can also machine wash and dry clothing, bed linens, and other items that an infested person wore or used during the two days before treatment using the hot water laundry cycle and high heat drying cycle, okay? So um, even... If you have items that haven't come in contact with a lice infested person, you may or may not even know, it's a good idea once in a while to even just machine, wash and dry on really high heat. So you just get rid of a lot of bacteria. So a lot of bacteria cannot survive at very high temperatures. A lot of insects cannot survive at very high temperatures. So apart from the fact that it will safeguard you from contacting lice, it will also safeguard you from other types of infections or infestations. If you machine, wash and dry on, on a really, really high heat cycle, once in a while, okay, do that do that do that or uh things that cannot be washed seal them dry clean them or seal them in a plastic bag for two weeks okay um again remember i said one of the causes is that is is when kids store their belongings with other people's belongings and if those other belongings have a uh, 
uh, are in contact with somebody who has lice, then it's possible for the lice to be transmitted that way. So tell your children not to keep their clothes with other people's clothes or their personal items with other people's personal items. They should try to keep their clothing items separate from those of others, okay? They should ask for separate lockers, you know, separate drawers or separate cabinets or things like that. And it's good to vacuum floor, furniture, especially where um, infested people have interacted. Or if not, vacuum occasionally, vacuum the floor, vacuum the furniture, okay? And please, 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 like I was even mentioning when I was talking about treatment, try not to use things that have are like pesticide-based items because you want to control head lice. So things like fumigant sprays or fogs, they are not necessary to, con to, to, to control head lice. And they can actually be toxic if they are inhaled or absorbed through the skin. Remember I mentioned that when I was talking about treatments. Please, please, please be very, very careful. Be very, very careful. This is very important to know. Don't just say, okay, my child has a head lice. Let's just get um, the insecticide that we use to kill mosquitoes and then you now spray it on their head. No, things like that are really, really dangerous. They can be toxic. Um, they can cause allergic reactions. Some, aller some allergic reactions have been known to kill people. So please be very mindful of the steps you take in when you're trying to control things like this, okay? So this um, is the end of my teacher lecture teaching and then I'll just do a wrap up, all right? So that is everything that I said. Okay, let me teach you about lice. You understand what it is, uh, who is at risk, what causes it, um, what are the treatments, what are the prevention methods that you can use to safeguard against the lice infestation. So please, I hope um, this video has been helpful for you. I did like an Instagram live about lice a couple of weeks back and um, it was pretty short because I tried to keep my lives as brief as I can. So I promised that I was going to do a proper video um, and put here on YouTube, going more in depth, um, teaching you about lice, okay? So if you come across anybody who has lice, uh, if your child has lice, don't panic, <laughs> don't panic. There's stuff um, that you can do to get rid of it and you can get rid of it quite easily. Okay, so just choose whatever treatment it is you want to use and then you run with that. All right. So until I see you in my next video where I'll be sharing hair care content, um, hair care management content, you know, all the various things that can help you in managing your child's hair or your hair. Do take care of yourself. Take care of your child and God bless. I love you. Bye.